Mr. Grush, you sat on the Unidentified Anomalous Phenomenon Task Force created in the 2020 NDAA, correct? Yes. Uh, there have been some things that, uh, that have been mentioned here during this hearing that I wanted to pick up on. Um, Mr. Graves, you mentioned specifically during the answers to one of your questions, you named Boeing contractors um, being engaged in an incident regarding this red cube about a football, um, a football field wide. I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about the interaction, or Mr. Grush, either of you, the interactions between defense contractor companies and any UAP related programs or activities. So I'll just say that the information about uh, the contractor himself were provided by a witness, and I have no particular Understood. detail in that relationship. Mr. Grush. Uh, the kind of general unclassed wave tops, uh, certainly the contractors, you know, are the metal benders, so to speak, mm -hmm. the ones actually. Uh, doing specific uh, performance on government contracts. Are they required um, to issue any disclosure regarding UAP sightings, or do they engage in any uh, reporting around this? Uh, in terms of the contractors? Yes. Not that I'm aware of. They do not. Okay. Now, when it comes to notification that you had mentioned about um, IRAP pro IRAD programs, we have seen uh, defense contractors abuse uh, their contracts before through this committee. Um, I have seen it personally, um, and I have also seen the notification requirements to Congress abused. Um, I am wondering, one of the loopholes that we see in the law is that there is, at least from my vantage point, is that depending on what we're seeing is that there are no actual definitions or requirements for notification. Are there what methods of notification did you observe? Like when they say they notified Congress, how did they do that? Do you have insight into that? Uh, for certain IRAD activities, uh, and I, uh, I can only think of ones conventional in nature. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they thro uh, flow through certain, I'll just say, SAP programs that have cognizant authority over uh, the Air Force or something, and those are congressionally reported compartments, but. IRED is literally internal to the contractor, mm -hmm. so as long as it's money, either profits, private investment, et cetera, and they to, can do whatever they want. To put a yeah. finer point on yeah. it, when there is a requirement for any agency or company to notify, or any agency to notify Congress, do they contact the chairman of a committee? Do they get them on the phone specifically? Is this through an email to hypothetically a dead email box? Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of it comes through what they call the PPR, Periodic Program Review Process, mm -hmm. if it's a, you know, a SAP or Controlled Access Program Equity, and then those go to the specific committees, whether it be the SAS, okay. CASC, HISI. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I apologize. I, I just, my time is limited. Um, it, Mr. Graves, one of your main concerns is that the FAA currently does not have an official process to receive reports of UAP from pilots or others, correct? Correct. And um, in your experience, what data should the Aero program prioritize for potential collection? We have, you know, location, date, time, but are there other specific uh, characteristics that should be included in these reports? Certainly. Uh, I think that there's two categories that would be important. Uh, one would be kinematics and understanding the specifics of how the vehicle or objects are moving. Uh, and the second would be a more zoomed out approach of being able to uh, look at origin and destination uh, after or before the incident, as well as getting a better contextual understanding of how these, uh, these objects are interacting with each other. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, uh, I, because I only have a minute left, I apologize we only have five minutes today, but um, for the record, if you were me, where would you look? Titles, programs, departments, regions, if you could just name anything, um, and I, I put that as an open question to the three of you. I'd be happy to give you that in a closed environment. I can tell you specifically. Thank you. Um, Commander Fravor? And I would say, and I've told people that you, you have to know where to look. They're not going to divulge it to you because of the classification levels. But if you know where to look and who to talk to, which is exactly what Mr. Grush can point you, then you, then you have them. Okay. Mr. Graves? I was an operator, so I was depending on folks like Mr. Garage to do that homework. Okay. Thank you very much. I yield back to the chair.